All right. Um, today we're going to talk about moment of inertia. And so we're getting into rotation a little bit. Uh, and to look at this correctly, um, I want to remind you about Newton's second law. Some of the forces equals mass times acceleration. And specifically talk about what he meant by this quantity here. Um, it's mass, obviously, but for physicists, that's inertia. And so mass really is a measurement of an object's resistance to a change in motion. or a resistance to a change in velocity for us. That's how we look at <clears throat> inertia just linearly. Now, when we start talking about torques, so we have Newton's second law for torques, sum of my torques is equal to I alpha, we're no longer talking about changes in motion, we're talking about um, a change in angular motion. So it's not change in velocity, it's change in angular velocity. It has to do with spinning. So when we talk about this, it's resistance It's resistance to um, a change in angular momentum. And a really good way to get an idea of <clears throat> um, change in angular momentum Sorry, or, or a resistance to a change in angular momentum is, is to try to balance a baseball bat. It's easier to try to balance it from the bottom because you have a greater moment of inertia from the handle in because most of the mass is on the top. Um, I guess I'll make an attempt at drawing a baseball bat. Yeah, it's like a wiffle bat, right? You have your greater mass concentration at the top, so it's It's easier to balance on the top than it is the bottom. Even though it has the same, um, even though it has the same mass, even though it has the same inertia, um, at this point, it's easier to balance because it has a, a bigger resistance to a change in motion at the bottom. And what that has to do with is not only mass, but more importantly, mass distribution. And so with a baseball mat bat, we see that most of the mass is at the top or far away from our balancing point. That gives it a greater moment of inertia, which makes it easier to balance. <clears throat> so, in general, our moment of inertia depends on two things. Okay. Um, so this is what they're going to give you on the formula sheet. It's the integral of r dm. Sorry, r squared dm. <clears throat> and what this tells us is that it depends both on mass and the location of that mass. Um, if we're looking at it for multiple objects, it is the sum of m times r squared. For however many different masses you have, it's this. When we reduce that to something that's infinitely small, it goes down to this. Differentially small pieces of mass located a certain distance away. But the two things that are important in the moment of inertia are both mass and where it's located. So, moments of inertia that are important to know. Mass on a string, or, or more importantly, the way we're going to think about this is a point mass. Moment of inertia is equal to just mr squared when we have all the mass located at one spot. <clears throat> so the next thing we have is a rod at an end. In that case i is equal to one-third mr squared or a rod at center we've got one-twelfth mr squared. We have a disk 
A disc is a solid, uh, a solid mass run all the way through. Think of taking um, a solid cylinder and cutting an end off of it. A disc is one half mr squared. A ring. We'll do it here. A ring is just m r squared. It turns out with a ring, all of the mass is located the same distance away. And then we have a sphere. That's two fifths m r squared. Okay. And again, what this means is that the objects with the biggest moment of inertia are the hardest ones to spin, whereas objects with the smaller moments of inertia are the easiest to spin. It's the easiest to change them. <coughs> so it all has to do with changing angular motion. Okay, if we were to take these things and roll them down a ramp, things with the smaller moments of inertia, the, the rod or the disc or the sphere, would get to the bottom first faster than objects with a larger moment of inertia, like a mass on a string or a ring or something like that. So that's the basics. These are the ones you need to know for the AP test just to be able to compare between the two, or between two or three more of the objects. It's also a good idea to have a handle on balance. It's easier to balance when you have a larger moment of inertia. The next thing that's really tough to deal with is um, parallel axis theory. Parallel axis, axis theorem gives us a way of finding the moment of inertia of something that's, that's complicated. So we'll look at it in a very simple case. First one we'll look at is a rod about one end. Now, usually, if this is my pivot point P, then we automatically know that the moment of inertia at point P, that's at the center, is 1 12th ml squared, where that whole length is L. Now if we want to take that and instead we want to make this the pivot point. So we use the parallel axis theorem which says our new moment of inertia is equal to the moment of inertia at the center of mass plus the mass of the object times we'll say h squared where this is the distance from the center of mass to the new point of inertia. So in this case, this distance will be h, or L over 2 is going to be h, because we're moving our pivot point from the center of mass to this point at the end. So it's going to be the moment of inertia about the center of mass, 1 12th ml squared, plus m times h squared, or L over 2 quantity squared. So we've got 1 12th ml squared plus 1 4th ml squared. Um, so that's 1 12th plus 3 12th or 4 12th ml squared. What that reduces to, of course, is 1 3rd ml squared. Um, which is what it should be. Okay, so this is finding <sighs> finding the moment of inertia when we're spinning about a point that is not the center of mass. Finding moment of inertia I at a point that is not the center of mass. That's what this whole thing is about. So another, another case is to take a disc, and instead of looking at it at the center of mass, to look at it, we have this sort of new length. We'll call it, in this case, 2R. We're going to make sort of a physical pendulum out of this thing, and we want to know what the moment of inertia of the entire thing is when we have removed it not just r but 2r from the center of mass where this is the radius of the object and we've lowered it another additional radius r.
Now, the reason that we use I equals ICM plus MH squared is because this object is going to do two things as it moves along um, its path. The first thing we're going to have is the center of mass moving along this dotted line. So what we're going to have is if, if we pretend it's just this mass, it's going to move along this dotted line. Well, that is where we get this mh squared thing from. If it wasn't a physical object, then the moment of inertia would just be the mass of this object moving at a radius r away from our new pivot all the way up here. That's one of the motions that we have to consider. See, now we have one object doing two different things. The other thing is that as this thing rotates along this path, sorry, moves along this path, the object itself sort of oscillates in position or spins in position around its center of mass. That's where this motion comes in handy. That's why we have to do both of them. The object itself is spinning, and then the center of mass of the object is moving around this new pivot point, which is why we have to do all of this stuff. So we have 1 half mr squared plus m times 2r squared. Um, so we have 1 half mr squared plus 4 mr squared. That gives me 4 halves, or 4 and a half, so 9 halves mr squared. Now if we start getting much further away from the center of mass than that, you'll see that this is going to have, the original center of mass is going to have much less of an effect than this part of it. That's why we don't use it for everything. Um, but sometimes it's helpful. <clears throat> so you will at some point have to use the parallel axis theorem to find the center of mass or something, whether it's in a multiple choice question, which I can almost guarantee, or even if it's doing something as simple as this, when a free response question says determine or find a way to derive an expression for the moment of inertia of a rod about its end.